So Pastor Rich, I have read a little bit about your story and you have a wild testimony. You came to faith a couple of years ago in 2019. You're a preacher now and there's so much to unpack. And I don't want to start with your childhood. I actually want to start with you were living a life very different from being a pastor and a Christian. You were living essentially in, in the occult. How in the world did you end up you know, dealing with these issues like voodoo, Santeria, how did you end up there? So it was um, me seeking spiritual um, truth. They, it's the, the question that used to run through my mind and really bother me a lot was what's the purpose of life? Because I had attained um, all these worldly um, goals, like these check marks on my list, my lifetime, you know, list to fulfill certain things. And, you know, things were um, being fulfilled. The goals I had since I was younger, money, traveling, um, you know, even um, educational, you know, everything that I wanted, you know, woman, all these things. And um, I was still empty inside. So that question would run through my mind constantly. What's the purpose of life? Like, what are we doing here? And I would be with my friends, you know, smoking, drinking, partying, just hanging out, you know, and just asking that question um, constantly, like, hey, guys, you know, what do you guys think we're doing here? And people would always want to change the subject. They wouldn't want to, you know, talk about it because it's a deep question. And um, that's what led me um, to consider spiritual practices. And it wasn't really um, until I lost a package, a drug package in the mail that just sparked everything. Um, Because you were a drug lord, by the way. You You were a drug lord. Like you were dealing drugs, right? I mean, this is something you were doing. Yeah, I was a kingpin, um, drug lord. I, I lit, like if, if if I was to get arrested, um, if I would have got arrested back then through um through that uh, around that time, they would have they would have definitely marked me with um a, like a kingpin charge and all that because of the operation I had. It was from um state to state. It was federal, even out of the country. It was a huge marijuana operation. My entire life, I sold drugs, but this was like when I really went all in and started to um really build a network and um. Yeah, man, I lost a package. It was for about $20,000. And I mean, back then it wasn't really a lot for me because um, I was making a lot more, but it was more um, of, of, of like a pride thing. It was more like of, a, I need to figure out who did this, you know, and I had dabbled on the dark web and all that. And I knew how, I knew how the dark web worked um, when it came to drugs and um, how people manipulate um, even, you know, the postal, you know, USPS, UPS, FedEx, how they're able to get in and, and um, steal packages. And I just felt something like, man, I, I want to figure out who did this. Like, you know, the package on, you know, on the system just said, you know, not delivered. It just was a pending delivery, never changed. I I remember I even called USPS off of, you know, my burner phone, you know, trying to figure out information and they just couldn't figure it out. Um, USPS, I'm sorry. And um, I mean, I just, I just went deep. Um, I decided, you know what, I can't do it in the physical realm. I'm I'm going to take it to the spiritual realm. And at this point I had already dabbled in um, psychedelics, um, you know, things like um, yoga, Buddhism, Hinduism, quantum physics. I, I, I'd already been studying these things. You know, Nikola Tesla, just his, um, what he believed in, you know, his theological stance on spiritual spiritual stuff. Frederick Nietzsche, um, you know, I was, and, and all these guys, by the way, they had terrible um, life, life ending uh, tragedies, you know, suicide and different things. They went crazy because they couldn't figure it out either. So at this point, I was like, you know what? This gives me an excuse. Let's go to Haiti. And the girl I was dating, you know, she she had a voodoo priest um, cousin in Haiti, uh, well known in a city called Jacmel, very very well known, um, very very um, popular out there. You know, big property, um, taken care of because of how successful he was with the witchcraft. And um, so you know, when I asked her about you know meeting him, and she spoke to him, she said that we'd have to go out to Haiti. And at that point, you know, she thought, you know, ah, you're not gonna go. You know, that's no no one goes to Haiti unless you're crazy. And I was like, well, let's go and. We went, and when we got out there, you know, I saw things that um, I'd never seen before. You know, I seen the rituals, I seen, the, the, you know, the tarot cards, I seen a demon, a literal ancestral spirit, which is a demon, possess the man. Um, after him doing a whole ritual and demonic worship and praise onto their onto the deity, they're called Loas and um, in Haitian Voodoo, and um, the demons speak through him and. Um, like the devil does, you know, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy, but he'll always tell you. What What were yeah. you thinking? I mean, so you go down there, this package sends you on this tailspin, you go down to Haiti, 
and you're going down there to tap into something you know that you assume is greater uh, than what you could do as a human being. You go down there and you see what you just described. As you were watching these things, was there any part of you that was like, um, maybe this was a mistake, or were you like, wow, this is going to help me? Like, what was going through your mind during that? Uh, I was um, at first. I was scared. I mean, not scared. I would say nervous because it was it was a third world country, and where this guy had property, it was not in a nice area. So seeing like the like the people, the culture, you know, buildings half you know half cut off because of the earth, earthquake just destroyed. You know, it, it, I was I was a little bit on guard, and then when I got to see what he was doing, I was very defensive. Um, I didn't believe in it. I was like, man, this is a waste of money. Like, there's like you know, I spent this money to come out here. Like, this is stupid. <laughs> But then when he started, you know, reading my cards and doing different things and telling me truths of my past, like specific details, that's when I was like, okay, maybe this is it. Maybe I did make the right decision, um, but I, I want to know who stole my package. <laughs> like, I need names. I need details. And that's the one thing that the devil used to keep me going because he told me all these things, but he wouldn't tell me who it was. What, what that demon spoke through him and said was, hey, when you get back, it'll be revealed to you. So I was, at, after seeing all the stuff I saw, I mean, human skulls in the, in the huts and the rituals. And it, I mean, that stuff was just, just like weird. It was eerie. Like, it was just like, I didn't like it. I was like, man, this ain't, you know, what I, what I, 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 I prefer. But um, <laughs> I respected their culture and like, okay, this is what they do. You know, maybe it's a cultural thing, traditional thing, maybe just because I'm not used to it. You know, that, but I mean, even back then I had discernment and I knew that, um, it was wrong deep down in my stomach. I knew it was wrong, but, um, yeah, I got back to America. That's when things went, went crazy. I mean, friends, you know, just turning on me and even me turning on friends, it got really divisive, um, isolation, you know, isolated myself. Um, and so you I were starting to be affected by that experience and by opening yourself up, up to that. Yeah. The like, you, Once I opened myself up to that, it was, it was go time. Um, I mean, that's when everything just went to a whole nother level. Um, my mind, um, just like my emotions, my anger, the murder I had in my heart, just different things. Cause I'm in the drug game and, you know, just assumptions and rejection just from, you know, I didn't know that all these things were just, just all came together and where, you know, they were trying to, those, those unclean spirits, those demons, you know, Satan was trying to, uh, you know, induct me into the demonic realm as a, you know, a dual inducted warlock. And it was a whole plan he had. So it was that breaking point. And, um, and I went down a, a crazy path. It wasn't just Haiti. I, after that, you know, I, I went to more voodoo priests in LA and psychics and mediums. Now I don't even care about the package. I don't, it doesn't even like matter to me anymore. I'm going and seeking more stuff. I went to New Orleans. Um, I mean, I seen the warlock that does voodoo for Solange Knowles, Beyonce's sister. I actually seen her walk into the um, witchcraft store while I was there um, doing rituals. Like, I mean, I'm seeing her buy you know, the, um, the items for the ritual, her going to the counter, you know, speaking to the warlock and then, you know, thinking, man, this is Solange Knowles. This is Beyonce's sister. These are multimillionaires, famous people. This is my calling. Like, you know, this is what I'm called to do. This is, this is my ancestral, you know, you know, thing. Like this is what my, the, you know, my family, my relatives from way back did. Cause they have all these lies. They tell you all these stories about reincarnation, where you come from, what your grandma, your great, 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 great grandmother did. And they try to convince you like, man, like this is what it is, is the truth. And man, the psychics I, I, and the mediums, I'm assuming like the psychics, the mediums, the other people you're going to see, they're telling you, you were meant to do this. You were meant to go down this path. So it starts with that package. You go down there, you experience that. Then you start searching for it all, all over the place. You're seeing people who are reinforcing this idea for those who don't know, what is a warlock? Because that's a term that might be unfamiliar to some. A warlock is um uh, like a male witch, a male witch in a way. And a warlock isn't just um someone who wears crystals around their neck, like TikTok. You know, you see like it's someone who really practices. It's like a demonic, a demonic pastor or a demonic prophet, like a leader. Like you have a pastor of a church, someone who leads a church. Then you got the other side. A warlock is someone who trains up other warlocks, who trains them up to be used and eventually get their own what in um in that culture they call it botanica which is a, a witchcraft store and once you have that then you start then you start training up it's like the devil takes everything god does and perverts it so like just like you know in the kingdom of god we have you know the apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher right and ephesians the fivefold ministry you also have 
the uh, the devil who takes it and perverts it on the other side and has his 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 version of it because he can't create he only could just pervert you know yeah and so you so you're starting to believe this that there's this whole history in your family that you should embrace this what was going on in terms of your practice of you know were you communing communicating with these demons were you interacting with them what was sort of happening as you were descending into this i was definitely uh communicating with them um my faith was 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 at such a level in these ancestral spirits or demons that i believed you know they were who they what i was taught so there was different spirits um you, you know there was cherokee spirits you know haitian voodoo spirits santeria spirits who have names and um and i would i would listen to them i would hear their voice i would listen to them i would follow them I would um I'd be led places um there was like you know divine stuff happening like it was or supernatural stuff happening that um that really made me believe like man this is this is real you know and it wasn't God it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't Yahweh it wasn't you know Yeshua it was it wasn't um the highest power but it was a def it was a demonic power um and uh, man I, I seen things I seen things that were real um I took you know, ritual baths. I did rituals. Um, I saw power. Um, and it was, it was real. It was definitely real. And it was, it was deceptive though. How long, and I would add too, you know, you, you were in the military, right? You had this success that was really good success, but that was tainted as you were sort of living this double life. Were, were that, was that over? So the, this descent into the occult, did that overlap your military experience? Did that also overlap sort of your, your normal life that you were living? It did. So, um, when I, um, when I got out of the military, um, I, again, I had my, um, my FAA, um, certificate, like, um, as a air traffic controller, I was certified through the FAA to work as an air traffic controller, controller in the towers. Um, I could have went and just started working. Um, I had to go to Oklahoma, um, Oklahoma, take a few more tests and, and really get certified and just go all out making, you know, six figures starting off. I had my, my, um, my bachelor's degree. I was in graduate school, all that stuff. Great GPA, but, um, I stopped everything. I stopped all my plans go from going like, you know, going that route, even the marijuana, it was like money, like the love of, or the, 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 the fiending for money. Like I, I had my entire life, it kind of like transitioned to where everything was like spiritual. Now I had a savings and everything. And, I was just like, you know, I'm gonna go all out with the spiritual stuff because I wanna, I wanna know the truth. Like I, deep down, I knew there was more. So like in witchcraft, there's always more to learn and more to do. Like there's never a, like a, oh, I got it now. Like I know the truth now. It's always something new. That's what led me into shamanism, being trained up by shamans with chakra balancing. Um, actually, one of a famous shaman worldwide, like I mean, known worldwide. He trained me up, you know, in um, West Palm Beach and. You know, and I learned I learned all that stuff, the Cherokee and Syrian spirits, the breath work. I did the breath work. I've been to all those practices where everyone's breathing in and breathing out. And, you know, there's actual demonic manifestations, people like de demons like manifesting. I didn't know that back then. I thought it was like you're just you're getting rid of your trauma and like all this stuff. And man, it was it was it was crazy because of how it, it was real. But there wasn't a truth revealed to where it's satisfied, you know deep down in your spirit, like this is it, it was always more. So, you know, it's interesting because, and I'm trying to put myself in your mindset back then, you were you were selling drugs, you lose this package, you know, you're trying to solve this thing, you go down this path, you just described, and I think one of the saddest things about this, and correct me if I'm wrong at all, but a lot of people who go into the occult, certain parts of it, they think they're helping people. They actually believe, like we're here to heal these people, or if, even a psychic or a medium, and I don't think a lot of Christians think of it this way, but they believe they're connecting you with a dead loved one, that they're actually yep. helping you, some of these people. You know, as a warlock even, did you believe you were doing, even though you had these nefarious things you were trying to uncover with the drugs and who you know, stole the package, did you believe you were helping people? Like, what was your mindset as you were in the midst of this? I definitely, I definitely believed I was helping people. I mean, I was trying to convince family members and friends of this stuff. Like I was, I was, I was, I was teaching people and letting them know, Hey, this is good. This is our, this is, this is, this, there's a white side and a black side, white magic and black magic, you know, and really it just balances each other out. But Hey, I'm not on the, the bad side. I'm not, I don't want to kill anybody. I'm on the good side with, you know, with the herbs and the different things that, that you could, you could heal emotion, emotions and traumas and physical ailments. And, and I thought that I was doing the right thing. I mean, I was even trying to convince my mother and father 
that it was that it was our ancestral um, line. Like this is ancestral spirits. And I thank God that my father and mother, you know, they stood strong. I mean, my dad, even though as a lukewarm Christian at the time, um, you know, you know, out of the church, kind of living a real lukewarm lifestyle, he still stood strong and was like the blood of Jesus because my grandma, my grandmother, and I didn't know this till later, was a powerful woman of God. She, you know, she already uh, was in heaven at the time of this whole, you know, um, spiritual uh, journey. But um, but she taught my dad things at a young age, and I didn't know any of this till I got saved. And my and then my dad actually came back to the Lord recently, which is good, which is amazing. On fire for Jesus now, but your whole yeah, family, your to- whole family has right. I mean, so you're yeah. trying to convince them of you were trying to spend all this time convincing them of this stuff. You become a Christian and a pastor. Now your whole family has, and that which is amazing. Hallelujah. That's amazing. Yes. My, my entire family, my my father, my mother, my brother, who um you know who looked at me in the eyes when I first got saved and said, "Wait till you find out it isn't Jesus," you know, because he was um at the time very famous with cryptocurrency on YouTube. You could look him up, Alexander Lorenzo, well known in the cryptocurrency community, one of the first ones, multimillionaire, big warehouse, you know, cars, and you know that 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 fame and that pride. But um, he actually fell. Um, he fell. Um, had a hard fall and came to Christ. Um, got deliverance, healing, and is on fire for the Lord now. On fire. I mean, dedicated to, to Jesus, like true relationship with God, filled with the Holy Spirit, like, and God is is building him back up which is beautiful. But yeah, my entire family, by the grace of God, got saved and they're on fire for Jesus now. So how deep you, you had that voodoo experience and then Santeria, did you view voodoo and Santeria as helpful and good? You know, cause I know that while you were there, you said some of it seemed not, you know, the, it was a little off. You knew that some of it was off. What was your take and how deep did you go in those particular elements? So there's a, there's a white side and a, and a black side, like they call it white magic and black magic. And I, I um I, I educated myself on both and saw different things on both. I actually was um I actually turned down a, uh, a few rituals that were offered to me by um a voodoo pri- the, the voodoo priest from Haiti who actually came to Florida to um to work with me. But you know because he actually told me like hey you could light up a candle to kill this person who owes you money, and that's the first time um I just I heard a voice tell me if you do this I can't help you. And um I actually asked the voodoo priest about Jesus. Um, at that very moment, I just felt led to ask him because I was raised Catholic. And um, I'll never forget the minute I asked him about Jesus when I said, hey, you know, what about Jesus? And, you know, the demon inside of him put, you know, put his head down and wouldn't look at me in the eyes. And the girl I was with, who's now my wife, she uh, actually, she saw it too. And she, and Creel said it again, what about Jesus? Who was Jesus? And he was like, oh, if, if you know, if, if I, if I explain this to you, it's going to take a whole day. We'll do this tomorrow. We can't do that. Like, got really nervous and ended the um and ended the uh the meeting that we were having because when you have a meeting with these uh these warlocks and witches you gotta you gotta bring a sacrifice you gotta bring an amount of money you gotta bring a bottle of rum you gotta bring a cigar whatever they require like every demon or deity requires a, a certain sacrifice in order to summon him in the body of the person but it's all it's all just it's all fake but the, the demon's already inside the person you know it's just coming up but um I saw all different types of stuff, um, white magic and black magic. The white, the, the white magic I thought was good, you know, the protective side. I used to wear an evil eye. So I had an evil eye, $300 evil eye that was straight from Africa that they blessed. They, um, they took and blessed it. How they would bless certain objects was, you know, by doing a ritual. And, and it supposedly protected me. I had beads on, different types of beads for different deities. They, there were certain beads like red and white for Chango, you know, green and, um, green and yellow for another deity. And different uh, blue and white. And these, these beads were supposed to protect you. And if you wore the beads, the deities would be around you and would um, protect you from evil. So I thought that I was protected from evil. My altars protected me from evil coming in my home. Um, the sage that I would burn would protect me from evil coming in my home. The salt on the corners would protect me from evil coming in my home. When really I was just opening up demonic portals and allowing demons in, you know, and you're like a magnet. Demons you're making yourself a magnet to be a magnet to, to evil. I'm, so, so you, I mean, this is, it's wild to me. I mean, how many years did you spend? How much time did you spend in the occult? So it, it was a, it was a one year process. It was a quick one year process of me getting deep, going to different spiritual practices. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't working. I wasn't selling drugs. I wasn't in, I got, I was out of the military. I was fully focused on just figuring out like, like more and more truth. So it was a, it was a one year process. And at the end of that one year process, what happened? So um, 
after getting very like I, like again getting very deep and um and and the practices I, and and just continuing to learn more and more and more and more um eventually God started sending Christians so Christians just started approaching me um in a liquor store one Christian approached me um the barber my new barber I had left California moved to West Palm Beach um a new barber that I um was going to his name is Paul and um he started telling me about Jesus and showing me Christian rap and um you know all these super coincidental events led me to to just like like considering maybe it is Jesus but I always kept it in the back burner cuz I was still deep into the witchcraft but it wasn't until I ran across a video on YouTube as I was looking up um chakra balancing and reiki healing um just trying to uh, perfect my craft um just get better at it I ran across the video from um Torben Sandergaard from the last reformation powerful man of god um and he was casting demons out of a reiki healer I saw the title on my recommended you know, Reiki healer delivered. I forgot the, how the title went, but it was Reiki healer delivered from demons or whatever. I clicked it. And when I saw this witch getting delivered from demons after being a Reiki healer for like nine, 10 years, talking about her experience, how she got delivered, healed, filled with Holy Spirit, and then was out in the streets already praying for people and they were getting healed. It just, it sparked my interest. And I remember saying to my girlfriend, like, hey, like, you know, Christians have power. Look at this. And I just started, I just kept, I just kept it in the back burner, but then eventually I actually went on their, their map, met somebody, um, a lady named Sharon, um, who started praying for me. Um, I, I, you know, I would text her, call her every now and then, but I was kind of like hesitant because I was like, I don't want to deal with this. This is religious because my version of Christianity was the Catholic Church. You know, my mother being Catholic at the time, you know, raising me in the Catholic Church, I, I was just like, man, this ain't, this ain't it. There's no power. It's just, it's, it's just religion that you just go every day and you know, you're just whatever. It, it was it was boring. So seeing this, did you tell her? Video, did you say? Did you say like, hey, I'm a witch. Like this is who I am. When you reached out to her, did I'm a warlock? Did you tell up, her that? Straight up told wow. her like, hey, I do witchcraft. I believe in this. I wear these beads. I have this evil eye, this sage. I was straight up, and this woman was so like just compassionate and so confident. That's what that's what um really like blew my mind was how confident she was and fearless. How, like, you know, this lady saying like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. You know, and me just like, like, man, what, like, what type of power is this? Like this woman is saying she doesn't do rituals. And I remember talking to her about all that. Like, hey, I do this and do that. Do you do anything? Like, no, you know, I don't do any of that. You know, I don't <laughs> so do I any pray. of that. <laughs> she just prayed in the name of Jesus. And then I met another man, a man of God, you know, um, as he was walking his dog, the first time I opened up a Bible, bought it off Amazon, opened it up before I even could read a page. He stopped me, you know, walking his dog, just, hey, what is that? You know, it's the, it's, a, it's the Bible. He's like, hey, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a teacher. I'm a Bible, I'm a Bible study, you know, a Bible, a Bible teacher. And um, he sat down with me and read the, you know, the book of Romans a little bit and he recommended me to read it. When I told him about what I do too, he just was like, it's the name of Jesus. Go home and just start saying his name out loud. And I was like, how is this man so confident about saying Jesus's name? How does that do anything? Like what ritual do I have to do? How much does it cost? Like, where do I have to go? Like what? Because I was so used to that in witchcraft. You always got to buy something, do some type of ritual, and then follow like this instructional manual to try to get to the, you know, the, the goal that you want to attain. But he was just simply saying, use the name of Jesus. The, the demons tremble. Use the name of Jesus. And I'm just like, man, this guy's confident. She's confident. The, the barber that I was um, getting, I got, I got my hair cut from. Um, the, 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 my new barber was so confident and would not listen to worldly rap. I mean, I was trying to recommend him um, Nipsey Hussle, a guy that I used to listen to that I thought was mature, like super spiritual and positive, which he's not at all. You know, um, I was trying to like, you know, Hey man, like recommend it. He's like, man, I don't listen to that. It's Christian rap. And so all these coincidental events. And then the guy I met in the, um, in the liquor store, his name is Richard. You know, he approached me and just wouldn't stop crying. This man was like, Hey, you have a, you're, you have a light on you. There's angels with you. God loves you so much. Man, this man kept inviting me to his church for weeks. And finally, I was like, all right, I'm going to go to this guy's church. And I go to the guy's church and I see the barber, my barber on the stage playing, leading worship. And I'm like freaking out. Like, do you know him? He's like, I don't even know who that is. He's our worship leader because it's a mega church. It's a big church. And I'm like, man, like this is my barber. He's a worship leader. He doesn't even know him. What? The? And I just was, was already like shaking, freaking out a little bit. And then they started playing on um, Reckless Love, you know, how he leaves the 99 for the one. And man, that song just wrecked me. I just, I felt the presence of God for the first time, like just not, dropped on my knees and 
was just crying. And, you know, that's what led me to really go hard and start reading the Bible. And when I, you know, reading the book of Romans, I got, I, I got through, I believe all the way to like chapter eight or nine. I got, I, I was, I was, I was reading it like with understanding, even though it was in King James, I was reading it and I would go and just, you know, go online and look up a different translation on the Blue Letter Bible app, you know, and I was really trying to learn. And man, once I, I got to a certain point, it just, I just realized that Jesus Christ is the highest power. Like he's, he's Lord. He's, I didn't say Lord, you know, or, but I just knew he was the highest power. The minute I realized like Jesus, he's the one, he's, he's the one. Like I had this overwhelming feeling come over me. It was like a light in the, in the spirit. A light came into my apartment, hit me. I mean, like it was such a, it was such a powerful presence. It was, it, it, the presence entered me. Now the Holy Spirit entered me and I knocked, I got knocked to the ground. I started manifesting demons. I literally started crying, coughing, throw up. Like I was, I didn't know what was going on. I was just ah, yeah, like blacked out. Like I was there, but wasn't, it was like, it was crazy. And I got up and I just knew, and I was like, man, it, it's, it's Jesus. It wasn't here. It wasn't head knowledge. It wasn't, it, it was it was my heart. My heart changed. I had like I had love. I had I had peace now. Like it was like this is it. This is what I've been seeking. This is what I've been looking for. This is it. And I I mean I I remember I even spoke in tongues. All that like I didn't know what was going on. I just felt this overwhelming power. This overwhelming love. Like I just wanted to tell everybody. I was like this is it. I called the lady Sharon. Told her what happened. She was just rejoicing, praising God. I, I was just like, what do I do? So. I'm speaking to all these Christians that I met, like, what do I do? I have all these, these, these altars and, and all this witchcraft stuff, what do I do? And they were like, look, you got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. I mean, God was sending people left and right. I remember I, right now, it just came across my mind. I remember even an Uber driver, some random Uber driver I met. He was a Christian talking to me about Jesus. It's like God sent so many people in a short spirit, uh, period of time when, when he was like, enough is enough, it's time. You know how the Bible says you can't come to the Son unless the Father, you know, draws draws you in. It's like it was it was over. Like God, like I was like now, now, now He's gonna encounter my Son, and that's when I got filled with the Spirit. So you got filled with the Spirit. It's interesting because right now in the church, right there's a, a debate about deliverance ministry and exorcism, and everybody's got there's thirty different terms, and everybody's talking about different things. Sometimes they're talking about the same things. So you, when you had this experience, you were by yourself when you, the yes. Holy Spirit entered you, you met, you know, did you go through a deliverance after that? Did you not? Was that the, the deliverance? I'd love to hear your take. That on was that. so, so deliverance. Um, I didn't know any of that. I didn't know about the debates. I didn't know about the, de like what's going on. Like, you know, I didn't, I just, I just got delivered and I knew I needed more deliverance. Like I just, cause my mind, it was, the attacks were crazy and I knew it was internal and um, I went to a deliverance minister after that um, from a powerful deliverance ministry down in Fort Lauderdale, Invicta Ministries, Invicta Ministries. And this man of God really, you know, he's a, he, that's, that's his ministry, all deliverance. God's using him for that still to this day. And man, he just had me write, like fill out a, a form of all the things I did, all the witchcraft and just generational stuff. And, and when we met up, we did like a one-on-one -on -one, um, deliverance um, session. And I'll never forget, man, he, he started calling out demons and I was feeling things and, you know, more deliverance. I even, I, I spit up blood. I remember, again, I manifested demons again and they came out and I spit up and I, and I looked into the garbage can and he was like, hey, look, there's blood, man, that's blood. And I freaked out, man, because I was like, man, that's really blood. Like, this isn't yeah. just my throat, you know, right. like having a, you know, whatever. Like, no, it was blood and and... I mean, I, I felt more, it was like every time I went through more deliverance, I felt more and more freedom, like more peace, like more just like, man, I was sleeping like a baby. I didn't have to take pills or drink alcohol to sleep anymore. Like I, I completely got delivered from pornography addiction that I had my entire life. I mean, really like never went back to porn by the grace of God, like got delivered. I used to be addicted, to, you know, watching porn three, four times a day. Like a lot of, a lot of people out there are dealing with that, got completely delivered. I mean... I didn't want to fornicate with women anymore. I was just like, I'm done. Like, I don't want any of these girls. Even the girl I was dating, she was pregnant with my kid. My first child, seven months pregnant. I told her we can't even sleep in the same room. I was radical. Like, I thank God for the people that God sent in my life at that time because they really gave me the right counsel. They weren't, you know, like gummy bear about it. They were like, hey, right. you can't sleep in the same bed. What well, looks like sin is sin. You cannot, 
this isn't, this isn't your girlfriend. You're not boyfriend. That's not how it is in the kingdom. You know, it's, it's courtship and you need to grow in Christ and all these things. Like they kept it real with me. And, and, and I listened and I listened for the most part. <laughs> and, um, would you, yeah. would you have said that you were possessed before you went through all this, you know, in yes. light of everything you were doing? Yep. Fully, I you, definitely yeah. was. I definitely wow. was possessed. Um, I felt, I, I, I mean, I was hearing voices. I was literally hearing voices. Um, I mean, I, my friends, like my friends that got saved, some of them that got saved and even some of them that are still in the world, when I have conversations with them now, they're like, man, you've completely changed. Like, remember, remember you used to do this. Remember you used to talk. And I'm just like, man, what was wrong with me? Like I was messed up. And just to see the 180 and how I am now, I know I was possessed. Like I used to believe that the things I was doing were right. I used to believe like I was like I was in yeah. full on a, 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 a agreement. Like this is right. Abortion is right. These girls got to get aborted. I mean, the, 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 these, these girls got to get these babies aborted. I would convince people about abortion, convince people to get drunk, to, to, to cheat on their wives. Like I was, I was literally working for the devil. And now, now you're not only a Christian, you are a pastor. And so it's been four years since you've been a Christian and you're in ministry now. It's, it's pretty incredible to me you know, as we sort of round out to a close here, it's one thing to come into faith. What was it that convinced you you had a calling to go into ministry? So I didn't even know what a calling was. When I came to Christ, um, I got filled with the Spirit. I just wanted to go tell everybody about Jesus. I just I just had a fire in me, and I wanted to go tell everybody. And I, this is around COVID time, and I just went telling everybody, like, hey, this is what Jesus did for me. He's God. You know, I did all this other stuff, and none of it worked. And this is, this is the, he's the one, he's the highest power. People were getting, you know, touched by the Holy Spirit, crying in grocery stores and all that. And I was evangelizing. I didn't even know what evangelism was. And that ministry on um, the last reformation with Torben Sandergaard really kickstarted me. And that's their whole, um, that's their vision is kickstarting people, letting them know like, you know, like teaching them about their God giving authority, God given authority. And um, man, I just was like, okay, the Bible says I can lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. I can cast out demons. Like I got, I got delivered from demons and then in Christ, I got healed from a disease I had for nine years. So I knew, you know, firsthand deliverance is real. Healing is real. So because of that. So I you had a, a healing, you had a healing too. Yeah. I, I had larynx, larynx pharyngeal reflux. It's called, it's called silent reflux, LPR. They say it's genetic. Um, I had a hi, a hi, hiatal hernia. I had gotten four endoscopies in the military. They couldn't do anything about it. They just said, Hey, you know, you're going to be on Nexium, um, which is a protein pump inhibitor for the rest of your life which depletes your natural acid, which is really bad for you, which causes dementia and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm like, man, I can't, I, I knew what this could cause and I didn't want it. I mean, I was just like, I, you know, even in the world, I was trying all these natural remedies a lot. I mean, I tried everything, man. Like I tried all these herbs and alkaline water and nothing worked, Manuka honey. I mean, all these random stuff that, stuff that I would, you know, research on Reddit, nothing worked. But then when I came to Christ and he completely delivered me, it never came back. I mean, I was able to eat things I couldn't eat before. I mean, I couldn't drink coffee at all. If I drank even a sip of, co of caffeine, it, all my food was coming up unless I took a, a um, Nexium. And I was drinking coffee, no issues. I mean, completely healed me. Com uh, like that. They, they said the hiatal hernia. I remember I got an endoscopy in Greece. Uh, they, they said they had the hiatal hernia was, um, was just genetics and you got to deal with it forever. Completely gone. Like everything is healed. So I knew that healing was real. I knew that deliverance was real. I knew that Christians even, you know, because I got more deliverance, could need deliverance from oppression, you know? And I was just like, man, I, I, I know it's real. I want to do it. So I would pray. I would fast. I would ask the Lord, you know, to use me, use me, use me. I would go out and evangelize. And eventually deliverance ministry started. I was seeing so many people delivered. I learned a lot from Derek Prince. Um, people like Derek Prince, Isaiah Salvador at the time. He was, that's when he first started dropping videos and I was learning so much and I was just out there in the field, man. I was in the streets, literally house visits, um, downtowns, like anywhere I went, you know, the Lord literally was sending people to me that needed deliverance and people were receptive. They wanted it. I mean, I, the word of mouth spread. I had no social media. I, I wasn't posting on social media like that. I was, I was like against recording deliverances and healings. I, I was kind of religious, like, oh, that stuff is, they're just doing it for show and to be famous and for money and all that stuff. But, I, you know, eventually God, you know, taught me some more, you know, taught me how you could shine your light through the um, social media spaces. But um, yeah, man, and um, it was just natural. And then, uh, you know, I just, I, I got under some powerful men of God that, you know, fathered me in the faith. And um, it just, it's like, it, God shot me into it. You know, he shot me into it. And 
we had a house church, um, and it just started to grow. And then my spiritual covering out in um, Dallas, Prayer Mountain, um, Pastor Robert Summers was like, hey, you need to get ordained. Like, your Bible study has grown to a certain point that <laughs> you're pastoring. Like, you, you know, I was, you, I, was an, I was an evangelist. I still am for a while. I've evangelist, evangelist, evangelism, evangelism, evangelism. But now God was like, hey, you got to pastor. You got to teach. And the Lord really, um, the Holy Spirit taught me, you know, taught me quick, fast-tracked me. And now we have a ministry out here in, um, in Florida, Apopka, near Orlando. And it's growing, and it's a lot of youth, a lot of evangelists. And, man, we're seeing people um, transform drug dealers, giving up pounds of weed, witches bringing all their witchcraft, and it's like a regular thing. Like, every wow. service, people are getting saved. There hasn't been and, one and service. And delivered. Where, it sounds like you're doing deliverance, too, obviously. A right? lot of deliverance. So, yeah. Um, yeah. A lot. People are coming to get delivered from all types of things. We've seen, man, miracles. People getting healed from all types of diseases, um, you know, delivered from demons, generational curses, broken you know, people that um, are Christians, that have been Christians for a while, and just the Lord, just by faith and by his word, you know, really just doing what he does. Jesus Christ is God. You know, he's the fullness of God bodily, and um, he's moving. It's revival. It, revival is breaking out in our ministry for sure. Well, I appreciate you taking us through all this today. A lot of people are probably listening to this, watching this, and they're wondering, how can they connect with you, you know, find out what you're doing in ministry? Where's the best place for them to go and do that? Uh, I would say YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. It's the same for all of them. Richard Lorenzo Jr., my name. And um, yeah, all that. We're, we're posting videos on, on daily, um, if not every other day. And we're just, um, we're doing it to spread the light of Jesus, man. Just spread the light, of, the light of God, you know, so we could please, you know, we could please our Heavenly Father, you know, show the good works, you know, so that our Heavenly Father can be pleased through our faith, simple faith. And um, God is moving, man. So yeah, Richard Lorenzo Jr., Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. God is moving. That's a, play, a great place for us to stop there today. Thanks so much. Yeah.